Now let's focus on creating the stack structure in JavaScript. Last chapter, we had a look about initializing the stack class with the parameters mentioned here. But there are certain other parameters which is needed to be added. Like if you want to fetch a value from the particular stack, like you want to remove a value that is your element or you want to add a particular element in the stack, then you have to follow a structure, a predefined structure in the stack with respect to push and pop operations. So let's create a HTML file the way we did for list.html. Simply we will do the same for stack.html. We followed the same structure with respect to arrays, but we will follow over here again in stack. So I'll save this file as stack.html. Before that, I'll create a folder. So here inside, I'll save the file stack.html. Now here I will define the predefined doc type elements. So these are my doc type elements with the other tags, say HTML. Inside that I'll have head and inside head I'll have the meta tag, meta cassette, UTF-8, Inside that, I'll have the title. So my title will be for stack implementation. So I'll just mention stack implementation with JavaScript. Okay. So this is the first stack implementation. So let's move on to our body tag. So inside the body tag, so this is my body tag. And body tag will call for the javascript element that is script type text javascript so i'll include this part and i'll call for the src src is nothing but the source code for javascript so that will be demo stack.js okay so this completes my stack.html structure I'll include a comment over here in HTML style so that this will be nothing but my implementation of basic stack structure, stack structure in JavaScript. Okay, so this completes my HTML context with respect to creating a stack element. Now inside stack.js, I've already initialized my stack with the parameters top, push, pop, peak and everything. Now the next parameters I'm going to give is clear for clearing up the stack. So this dot clear equal to clear. After that comes length tag, which is this dot length equal to length. Okay, so this completes my stack structure. Now after that, I will define the logic for push. So push is nothing but adding up the element. So I'll say function push with the parameter element. And inside element, I'll create the logic for the same. So I'll say this dot data store. And inside this, I'll say this dot top. So top is nothing but the topmost structure in the stack so it will be like plus plus i'm incrementing the value with the latest element which is sent with inside the parameter this one so this is my element so here i'll enclose the comment for this function so the comment for this function will be adding an element in stack okay after push comes the next logic is with peak. So peak was like the topmost element is say 8 and the next element is say 7. So my peak element will be 7. That is the next element after the topmost element. So I'll say peak and inside peak I'll define the logic. So my logic will be top minus 1. So I will just say return. It will return me this dot data store. And inside that it will send the parameter this dot top minus one. Okay. 
So this was for the peak element. After peak comes the next logic for push and the pop element. So pop involves removing an element from the given stack. So this will be my logic for pop. So pop will be function. The name of the function will be pop. I will not take any parameters. I'll just mention the element. So I'll just say return this dot data store and it will remove that element. So I'll say minus this dot top as stack follows the LIFO structure that is last in first out. So the last accessible element will be deleted automatically. Then comes clear. So it will be function clear and inside clear I'll define the logic that is this dot top equal to zero. Okay. So topmost element will be cleared which means that all the elements in the stack are cleared with the initialization of zero. So that's the function clear all about. After this comes the declaration of elements. So I'll just declare a new stack, say var s equal to new stack. Okay, so this is my declaration. So I've initialized my stack and now I'm going to add elements inside this. So I'll say the s dot push. So my first element is say name David. The next one, you have to enclose semicolon at the end s dot push and after that comes the next element say the name is raymond after that comes s dot push comes the element parker okay so this is the creation of the elements after that you need to specify the length i want to get the length of the stack i have added up three elements so i should get the length as three so for that, I'll say console.log. I'm going to print. So that would be length. Length of the stack is. I'll concatenate it with the length character. So that would be s.length, the function which we declared initially. Length is to get the length of the stack. So it would be s.length. After this comes console.log I'll also print the peak element so peak would be the next element after the topmost element in stack s dot peak and after that comes the popped element so I'll say var popped equal to s dot pop and then after that comes the console element with like you have to print the pop element so i'll say console.log the pop element is say plus p o p p e d popped okay so this is like the popped element i'm saving inside this variable which would be printed over here after this comes your peak after popping up one element I need to call for the peak element. So I'll say console.log. I'll again print for peak element as dot peak. So this will show me what is the next element after the top element. So this is like synchronously you will get the values which are arranged in the stack. So I have the peak element after that comes. I will add one more element. Say my value over here will be another name which is Cynthia. So I'm pushing this element inside stack. So in this way, the logic applies with respect to JavaScript. Now I need to clear. So I'm clearing up the stack element. So I'll say s dot clear. And I'll just enclose this function. After that, I'll call for the length parameter. So here I'll say s uh, dot length. So for that, I'll just print using console dot law. The length is. with s dot length parameter okay so this will call me for the length this will be my next output then i'll again push an element so i'll say s dot push with other parameter say name as clayton 
and I'll just push this element and after that I'll again get this length parameter. So I'll just copy paste this part. So here it will print the length of newly created stack. I'm just creating the other sentences so that you'll get the output clearly. So here I'll mention the comment that line number 37 will be output 1. And after that, I have the other output to get the peak. So this would be line number 38, output 2. Then comes my popped element. So I'll say this would be my output 3. And after that, I'm going to again get the peak element. So this would be output 4. After that, I'm going pushing the elements and calculating the length. So this would be output 5. And after that comes the last output, which is after pushing the last element. So this would be my output 6, line number 46. Now the next thing we are going to do is to link this particular stack JS over here. So my stack here I have named as stack.js, so I'll name it as stack. This was just an example I gave you, so this would redirect me with the source element of javascript that is stack.js now let's go to our browser and let's have a look like what would be the output we are getting like whether the elements are added up in the stack whether they are deleted and how the calculation is done with respect to other elements so let's go to our browser and get the output of the stack as desired prior to that we need to add one function over here for length so that would be function length so this is for calculating the length which will give the number of elements in the particular stack. So that would be return this dot top. The topmost element will specify the length which is available in the stack. So let's go to our browser. So this is my browser and this is the uh, repository which we are coding for now. The new folder that is stack like in last chapters we created for arrays for list. So similarly we have it for stack. So inside stack, I'll just call for this element and that is a stack.html. So initially I'm getting the output like stack of the length like is three because we added three elements. Then three elements were David, Raymond and Parker. So I'm getting the length as three. So I'm getting the output one as three, which is proper. Let's check for output two that is s.peak. So that should be the second most element after the topmost one. So that is Parker, which is correct. So the next element was Parker because the last element which we added to that of the second element should be printed out over there. Then comes the popped element. So I'm removing that particular element. So the popped element is popped. So I'll just check in my browser. So now it is getting as undefined because we are not getting the popped element in the systematic phase. So just let's go to our code and check out what should be the popped element. So this should be s dot pop. So this is my s which is getting popped. So here I'll just copy this code. As there was a variable difference because the popped element was p o p p e d. So there was some variable change, name change. So that is why it is giving the constraint as undefined. So you need to verify this thoroughly that my variables are declared properly. So let's go to our browser. So this is the output which I am getting. The popped element was the last element which was added that is Parker. So after this, I am going to clear my stack. So let's go to our code base. So this was with output 5 that after clearing, I should get the value as 0. So let's go to our repository. So here I am getting the value as 0. After that, I am again adding up with a new code. So that new code is uh, with respect to new element which is Clayton. So I'm adding a new element. So my value again increases by one. So my s dot length character increases by one. So the length of the new, newly created stack is one. So in this way, I can develop a logic with respect to JavaScript and implementing stack logic in it. So stack is again nothing but the last in first out structure, last added element is removed first. So now in the next chapter, we'll focus about creating a palindrome structure with respect to stack. Like we'll create a palindrome logic from the JavaScript end and implement it so that we can get the desired output in our screen.